Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to take you through the solution to this question from the Leaving Cert higher level paper and this question is based on probability. So let's get started. In question A we're given a table which gives some details on the number of different types of students in a university and we're told that there are 22,714 students in the university in total and that figure is given here as well. So A part 1 just asks us to fill in the missing values so we're going to need our calculators for this. So for this box here, what we're going to do is add up these two. So this value here is the undergraduates, okay, which are 23 or, or younger. And this here is the postgraduates who are 23 or younger. So let's find the total value or the total number of students who are 23 or younger. And we get 14,138. Now for this value here, it's 24 or older, and then you have the undergraduate value. We don't know how many postgraduate students they are, but we have the total number of students who are 24 years or older. So we're gonna get this value here, 8,576. Take away this value to find the value of postgraduate students who are 24 or older. And we get a value of 5,654. Now for the final value, we have the total number of students. So we can do this in two ways. We can either get this value and take away this value, or we can add the total number of postgraduate students. So 1,353 and 5,654. So I'm just gonna go with that. So we already have 5,654 in our, in our calculators. So add on 1,353 and we get 7,007. So that's part one done. And for that question, you're going to get five marks. Part two tells us that one student is picked at random from the students in the university. Let O be the event that the student is 24 years old or older. Let U be the event that the student is an undergraduate. And we're asked, are the events U or O and U independent? And we're asked to justify our answer. We're going to use a test for independence. Now, there's a few tests for independence, but the one that I use most often is the probability of O multiplied by the probability of u is equal to the probability of o intersection u. So if this is true, if the probability of o multiplied by the probability of u is equal to the probability of o intersection u, then they are independent. If not, then they're not independent. So let's work out what p of o is. So the probability of o is first of all. So it's the probability that the student is 24 years old or older. So here we have 24 or older. The total number of students who are 24 or older is 8,576. And we're going to put that over the total number of students, which is 22,714. Now P of U, we're going to take from the table as well. So P of U is the probability that they are an undergraduate. So here's our undergraduate. We're going to take this figure, 15,707, and again, put that over the total number of students. Now let's multiply these together. So we have 8,576 all over 22,714 multiplied by 15,707 divided by 22,714 and see what we get. And we get a value of 0 0.261. Now let's work out the right hand side here, which is the probability of O intersection U. So that means that the probability that a student is 24 years old or older and they are an undergraduate. And we can take this from the graph. So they're an undergraduate and they are 24 or older. So it's this figure here, 2,922. Now let's put this all over the total number of students. So here we have the probability of O intersection U is equal to 2,922 all over 22,714. Let's work this out. And we get 0 0.1286. So we can see that these two values are not the same. So let's just state that probability of O multiplied by the probability of U does not equal the probability of O intersection U. Conclusion, the events O and U are not independent. And for this question here, you're going to get 10 marks. 
Moving on to the next part of this question, question B, we're told that three people are picked at random from a class and we're asked to find the probability that all three were born the same day of the week and to assume that the probability of being born on each day is the same. Let's think about it. If there's three students and they're born on the same day, but it's not a specific day. So if you take the first student, they can be born on any day of the week. So seven out of seven days they can be born on. But then the next student has to be born on the same day as the first student. So the probability of that is one over seven. Okay, so it's one of the seven days. And the same for the third student, one of the seven days. Now, if we were told to find the probability that all three were born on a Tuesday, it would be one over seven by one over seven by one over seven. But because it's just any random day, the first one can be any day of the week. So it's seven over seven. So this is equal to one all over 49. And this is our answer and it's worth five marks. Now for the final question, question C, we're told that there are B boys and G girls in a class, three over five, so three fifths of the students in the class are girls. Four boys and four girls join the class. One student is then picked at random from the whole class. The probability that this student is a girl is now four over seven. So find the value of B and the value of G. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two equations. The first equation is for the first instance where there's B boys and G girls and three fifths of the students are girls. And then the second equation is going to represent when we add in the four boys and four girls and then the probability that the student is a girl is four over seven. So first of all, B plus G is the number of students in the class. So G over B over G, so the probability that it is a girl is equal to three fifths. So the probability of picking a girl from the whole class, B over G, is three fifths. So let's just make this into a bit of an equation here. So we have five multiplied by G, we're just gonna cross multiply. Five G is equal to three by B plus G. So five G is equal to three B plus three G. I'm gonna bring this across here. So we have five minus three is two G is equal to three B. So G is equal to 3 over 2b. So that is just an important piece of information to hold on to as we keep going through the questions. So now we've just written g in terms of b. So now let's move on to our second instance. We're basically going to rewrite this again but with the new conditions. So probability of picking a girl. So that's the number of girls but I'm going to add four because we're adding four more girls all over the whole class. So now the whole class is going to be b plus g plus eight because there are eight people joining the class four boys and four girls. So I'm gonna say B plus G plus eight, and that is equal to four over seven. Now I know this may look a bit confusing, but basically what it means is that the probability of choosing a girl from the whole class is four over seven. So now let's basically do the same thing here and cross multiply. So we have seven by G plus four is equal to four by B plus G plus eight. So we're multiplying this here by this and this here by seven down here. So we're left with seven G plus seven by four, which is 28, is equal to four B plus four G plus four by eight, which is 32. So let's tidy this up a small bit. I'm gonna bring everything over to the left-hand side or bring all my Bs and Gs over to the left-hand side rather. So seven G minus four G, we're left with three G minus four B because that sign is gonna change when it crosses the equal sign, is equal to 32 minus 28. So that is going to be four. Now let's use this piece of information here to fill in G for three over two B. So three by three over two B minus four B is equal to four. So three multiplied by three is nine. So nine over two B minus four B is equal to four. So when we take nine over two and take away four, we're left with a half. So 0 0.5 B is equal to four. B is then eight because it's four divided by 0.5, okay? So B is equal to eight, and I'm gonna put that in here. So the number of boys in the class was eight initially. So when we know that B is eight, I'm gonna put it in here. So G is equal to three over two by eight. So G is equal to eight multiplied by three is 24 divided by two, so G is 12. So G was 12, which means that there were initially 12 girls in the class. So this is our final answer. B is eight and G is 12 and this is worth 10 marks. So that's all for this question, guys. I hope that I helped you with anything that you might've been stuck with. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you all in the next video.